time to put this one back together. This one I have shined up. The other one off the camera here is not shined up. We'll do that next. Uh, so let's take a look at what we want to do. I've gotten the uh, windshield all cleaned up nice. Or excuse me, the heat shield. Heat shield all cleaned up nice. That's good. I've got the um, pot rests all spiffed up as best I could. As you can see I've already shined up everything else so for those of you who are into shining that's great there you are um, let's set that aside I'm going to try to work in this area so that the, the new camera can see this is our old wick we're going to reuse that and I don't like that so much of this tip is sticking out so what I'm going to do I think that's going to cause me a problem with too much air gap inside the fuel tube so I'm going to just kind of Bend it over with this pair of pliers here so it's not so big. The idea being you want a little bit of, of gap at the very end of your wick, but not too much. And if you have too much wire sticking out, you aren't going to be a, able to affect that. It should be around three millimeters. Let's do that now. Okay, I'm going to insert this um, wick into the tube. And you can do that by kind of just spinning this around, braiding it around. And we're just going to spin that in there. Go ahead and shove that in there. Again, I think this is too tight. I may have to revisit this whole idea. But it's what came with the stove, so we'll just stick with it for now. Alright, using the little wire piece, I can use my needle nose pliers, push it all the way in here. Until I feel it bottom out. And then just pull it back just a little bit. About three millimeters is all you need. Okay, so that's our wick is back in place. Uh, next thing, let's go ahead and insert our brand new spindle. And we need a graphite. So I wanted to show you that. This is the old graphite. I'm planning on reusing. This is a new graphite. You can see most of that graphite still left. More than half of it, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick with that. And the way to do that is to slide it. Whoops, got to put our little metal ring on here first. Now you can see this is the, the concave side is right here. And the flat side is right there. Hopefully you can see that difference. All right, so we're going to put that on first with the concave side facing this direction, then we're going to put our graphite on here very gently. And we're going to spin that in there. Now, you're going to have problems smashing that in there. Kind of use your fingers to smash it in, the graphite. And then take your packing nut, also known as a stuffing box, some reason and then go ahead and tighten that up if you don't have one of these again you can use your wrench that came with the stove but I really recommend the flare fitting wrenches like I have here whoops they're pretty nice here let's get the right size there we go and you want to bring that so that it's kind of snug but not tight and you can judge it by taking your spindle control and see if you're still getting you know movement there should be a uh, snug but not too much movement okay all right so that's what I like to do I like to get this part set before I insert this into the tank we're gonna bring the tank over now now this can be a bit of a challenge want to Spin this here, get our wicking material kind of wound around itself as best as possible to feed that in. And this is where having um, dental tools really comes in handy. You can help squish that through. If you don't have that, just a, a flat bladed screwdriver will help you. All right, we're going to get that in there. All right, and I'm going to stop right here and show you something else. This 
is Permatex Aluminum Anti-Seize Lubricant. Now there's all kinds of other flavors of this same kind of stuff that are out there and it's designed to put on threads and that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna open this up and it doesn't actually help so much to seal but it gives it a little lubricant and makes it much easier in the future I'm just dabbing some on here makes it much easier in the future to uh, remove this. You can also sometimes get a full extra turn to make sure you get everything sealed. It's designed to operate at really high temperatures. I think it's like 1600 degrees Fahrenheit or some crazy thing. Anyway, I like to use it. It just makes all this stuff so much easier both now and later when I'm trying to take it apart again if I, I should need to do that or someone down the line needs to. All right, we gotta be very careful. There's 36, I think we decided there were 36 threads per inch on this tapered pipe joint. There we go. So you wanna bring that down and just do it by hand for a while. And then when it starts getting snug, let me wipe off some of that thread sealant, thread uh, lubricant. When it starts getting down towards it's being snug, you need to kind of judge where you're at. Now I have this upside down from where it needs to be. So I'm going to bring my 11 millimeter wrench in here and just kind of judge how that feels when I get it around. Oh yeah, so that's going to be great. It's going to be snug enough to seal and you want to have it you want to align this part here parallel with the tank structure. I'm just going to bring that over a little bit more. So that's what you're looking for, that kind of a look. All right, and if you do that, it'll line up. If you need to make a small adjustment left or right to get it counterclockwise or clockwise to get it to work uh, for your particular setup in the box, you can do that. All right, so we got that done. I'm going to just go ahead and take our spirit pan and spin that puppy on. And you could put some of that. Well, let's do it. Let's, I've got some left on my guy here. Again, you know, you don't have to do this thread uh, lube, but just adding a little bit makes so much difference when you, if you ever disassemble again. You won't have the same kind of like oof kind of problems you did otherwise originally. All right, so that's on. Just loosely, you know, just snugly tightened by hand. And next step is to do what I like to do right now is go ahead and do the cleaning needle. If you want to wait, make sure your stove works right before you do the cleaning needle. That's not a bad idea either. I've done enough of them that it's not really an issue for me. So I'm going to show you again how to, excuse me, mm, how to do a cleaning needle here. So I put it, put the cleaning needle in the end of an eraser on a pencil and I set it down inside here and I hold it with this hand. There we go. And I open up the spindle There's a click, and as I'm pushing down, I'm listening for clicks. That was one click. And come on. There's a second click. Open it up a little bit more. There's a third click, and you'll find these are, these are going to work best at between three and five clicks. And we're going to get one more. I'm going to go for four. Okay, that almost might have been two. So I'm going to check. That looks, just because I'm kind of used to it, I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, that's about right. You may find three or five or some other number even might work better for you. Okay, once I've got that in there, again, I've got some thread stuff left here on my 
dental tool I'm going to put on the, the threads of the jet here. Normally I'd use a little brush, but I forgot to bring that over here. <laughs> it's over on my other bench, so sorry about that. Here's a nifty little tool you can buy. A guy on eBay sells these. He makes them, I guess, and this is for the large size jet. These are great. Or if you don't have that, you can always just use the tool that came with it. And tighten that up good and snug because we don't want any leaks there. Okay, we've got our burner bell with the burner plate. My burner plate's off, loose. And then we're gonna, you can put more thread stuff on there if you wanted, but I'm, I'm just gonna go with it, it's pretty easy. And last thing, or almost last thing, we wanna replace our gasket. This is a new gasket I cut, it's out of Viton. It's uh, eight millimeters in the center and 18, excuse me, 10 millimeters wide diameter hole in the center and 18 millimeters on the outside diameter. We wanna get that in there. Good time to use a dental tool to work it into place. Get that baby in there. Okay, and then to final, to, to uh, make sure you got it well seated, you can just run it onto the tank and that'll finish seating it up. And it, it should feel good and snug, which this one does. Okay, and our flame plate. Now, I'll show you in a little bit how to do that. But here's a flame plate. So at this point, you could test the stove. And I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and do that here in a bit, but I think maybe I ought to put the other stove together first. So... Okay, <laughs> so we're back now and I've gone ahead and fueled these up. A little tip on fueling. You want to have the level of fuel right about here. And the way to tell that is I, I like to see about like this much uh, space, whatever that is, about half an inch maybe below the level of the filler. If you get them too full, they just take forever to heat up. And that's silly. Um, and they won't, they won't develop pressure very well. Okay, so a couple things on, on what to do next. We've got the pressure caps, the, the fuel caps cinched down. And we want to get the fuel out soaking into that wick. And one way to do that is just to open your valve a little bit. Open your spindle valve just a bit. And then if you just hold... Hold the tank in your hand and watch at your jet, you should see fuel coming out. And I wouldn't light one of these up until you do see fuel coming out of the jet because that means your wick hasn't gotten fully saturated. And I'm not seeing it yet. I'm going to open that up just a little bit more. So what happens by holding your hand on these is you're heating the tank, just like you're going to hear in a little while when you preheat. Or I am. You're not. All right. Oh, yeah, this one's starting to get fuel. I don't know how you can see that necessarily. You see it's starting. You can see it's wet here. There you go. See it's wet and it is coming out. So that means that I've got fuel soaked through my wick. That's a good thing. And here, uh, yeah, I'm getting it here too. In fact, I've opened that up too much. I can see the needle. Yeah, okay. So we got fuel soaked through the wicks all the way out into and out of the jet. Okay, at this point, as I always say, your best bet to preheating these is to use denatured alcohol, which as you've seen, I, I keep in this container here. 
Gonna run two stoves at once. Oh my God. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully we won't have any horrible things happen. Although, of course, you know, I know how spectator sports are. It's like, yeah, I want to watch it burn. I want it to fail and go crazy. Yeah, it'll be so funny. <laughs> we can put it on YouTube fails. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> All right, so there's the boring part. Waiting for the preheat to go. And likely I'm probably in post-editing. Post I'm speeding this whole mess up. Wow. All right, so this one's almost ready to go. Oh, let's see if we get some flame here. There we go. It's going two stoves at once. Oh my gosh. Boy, I don't know why I have so much more alcohol in this one. That's weird. Hmm. All right, well, we're gonna get it to go in here. Now, I'm not real thrilled with the yellowness here on the flame on this one, um, but I did use some cleaners to clean the bell, and sometimes the cleaners will leave this yellow character to the flame, whatever's in my cleaners is imparting yellow into the flame. So I ran a couple tanks through the both of the stoves here and the flame quality has improved a lot on that one that was yellow. Now I'm checking to make sure that everything works right, checking the cleaning needle operation and also the low level operation and finally the complete shut off without any uh, little candle flames or anything. So that works good. And we check the other one, same thing. Gonna check the cleaning needle operation. And the low simmer. And then the positive shut off. Yep, these are ready to go back in their boxes. So everything's working great. Another successful rebuild. This is how your 8R ought to look too. I hope this video will help you to solve your own 8R problems. If you have additional questions, probably best to email me at the email address that's down in the text below the video. Uh, appreciate any comments, any linking or liking or subscribing. Thanks again, viewers. <laughs>